This is a little Buddha that a, oh uh, that, uh, a Buddhist monk gave me. Wow. And then I got, this is, this is a Hindu uh, little statuette of uh, the monkey god Hanuman that uh, a woman gave me. Hey everybody, it is I, Gary Schumacher, and welcome to another exciting episode of Heretic Hump Day. I am uh, here today to call out some heretics, and uh, uh, welcome back. I uh, had a very busy week this week. I was, uh, we were celebrating my daughter's 16th birthday, and my wife and I are completely exhausted um, because we had it at a um, an Elks Lodge, which my daughter is an antler, at. <laughs> and uh, after the party was all over and everybody left and we had to break the party down and the tables and the chairs and, and bring all the leftover food home and we didn't get home till like after midnight so it was and we're exhausted today so I am a little little bewildered but I I trudge on here <laughs> that's what that's what dads do so as you saw that opening clip um, that is our former president, Barack Obama, who claims to be a Christian, but those little statuettes that he's showing that young lady, there are uh, things that he carries around in his pocket. Now, I'm going to get a little bit more into the, the longer uh, version of that clip here in a few minutes. Um, but the last I checked, wasn't he supposed to be a Christian? Now, how many of us walk around with statuettes of Buddha and the the monkey god Lord Hanuman in their pocket. Okay, I don't know what that's about. Uh, how how a um, now he has to carry around these little trinkets like they're like they're good luck charms or something like that. It even she even shows later that he carries around a lucky poker chip that somebody even gave him. But this this is just this disturbing to me. Um. So, so what's he do? Does he bow the knee to the Hindu god Hanuman now, uh, and Jesus Christ? Because you can't have both. That's not how it works. Um, he he said for years that he was a Christian because he wanted to become president, and he needed the people uh, who of Christian faith to vote for him. So that's what he did. I don't believe. I never did believe that that man was a Christian. I've never seen him walk out of a church. Of you, is there any? They have him. Uh, uh, followed around by camera everywhere he went for eight years, and never once did I see him walk out of a church, um, I, unless it was one of these, uh, you know, maybe maybe Creflo Dollar or something like. That. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I, it's it's funny how that you can always you see uh, Trump going to church. You see, even Joe Biden is Catholic. He went to church. I don't know how you know how much of a practicing Catholic he is, but uh, he. Um, but Obama, the Pavarotti never got him. Never got him leaving the church. I don't understand it. And I've never seen him bow his head in prayer um, like some of the other presidents we've had. So, yeah, I, I just don't know about this guy. And now he is um, bowing to the monkey god, Lord Hanuman. I mean, the level of deception from him is completely unreal these days. So um, I got that clip from a uh, YouTube channel called Nick Jones, and the name of the video that uh, I sampled from was The Shocking Connection Between Obama and This 90-Foot Demon Statue, which has uh, been erected in, of all places, Texas. Now I'm going to play some of the clips, uh, a clip from his uh, podcast, and uh, and if you haven't already checked him out, please go check him out because he's got he puts out outstanding content, and I and I do uh, frequently watch his uh, content quite often. I, I really do like Nick Jones. He really does study scripture, and he is uh, has sound doctrine, and he he calls him out. He calls him out when he sees it. Do we we do need more people like him? So let me just jump to some clips here. Hold on. This is what I had in my pocket today. Uh, I've got, this is, this is uh, rosary beads that uh, 
Pope Francis gave me. Wow. Uh, that, I, that obviously uh, means a lot to me because I, I so admire him and it makes me think about you know, peace and uh, you know, promoting understanding and ethical behavior. Um, this is a little Buddha that a, oh uh, that, uh, a Buddhist monk gave me. Wow. Uh, this is a... And this woman who's interviewing him is in such awe of him. Everything that comes out of his mouth, she's just in great glee of. Lucky poker chip that's metal. Oh, wow, that's really cool. That uh, uh, this biker gave me. <laughs> he was like bald and he had like a big uh, handlebar mustache and a bunch of tats. And this is when I was in Iowa in 2007. So he said, this is my lucky poker chip. You can have it. And then I got, this is, this is a Hindu... Uh, little statuette of uh, the monkey god Hanuman that uh, a woman gave me. And I've got a Coptic cross. This is from Ethiopia. So this is what our former president, Barack Obama, carries around in his pocket. This is the monkey god Lord Hanuman. Now it says here, people of the Indian origin inaugurated a 90-foot-tall statue of Lord Hanuman named the Statue of Union in Houston, Texas, on Sunday, August 18th. This majestic statue located at the, and I'm going to try to pronounce this, Shri Arataza, I forget it, <laughs> temple in Sugarland, Texas, where God's gum, guns and freedom were born stands as a thir the third tallest in the United States. The third tallest in the United States. Look at the size of this thing. To give it some scale, there's a crane at the bottom of, of the foot there, and there's a man standing between his legs, her legs, I don't know. Um, to give it some scale, that is one big ugly statue is what that is. And uh, that's who Barack Obama is carrying around in his pocket, the monkey god Hanuman, okay? This is supposed to be a Christian man, and he carries these, he's, he's to me, he's a false idol worshiper. It's exactly what he is. Okay, so I just want to switch gears here for a minute and talk about this guy again, Mark Taylor, who I did, I've done a couple of videos on since, like I said, he crawled out from under his rock again. And uh, let's just switch over here. I want to show you something because I caught a little flack about the um, the videos I've done on him recently. Uh, and uh, but I want to give you a little background on what he was up to several years ago when he's running around screaming about the 501c3s and all his conspiracy theories. He put this out. Uh, this is a uh, what I like to call the Mark Taylor oath. Okay. And uh, I'll read it to you: Army of God, Declaration of Unity. So he was putting this out and I'm on his followers to sign up with him for this. All right. This is pretty ridiculous stuff here. All right. So I'll, let me read it to you real quick. I, and you're supposed to put your name there in the name of Jesus decree and declare according to Matthew 18 and 19, that I will be in united with my brothers and sisters in the army of God and all forces of heaven that I will support and defend the word of God and his army with all of heaven against all enemies from the kingdom of darkness into the supreme sacrifice. So, yeah, this is kind of a like, like an oath uh, that something like what the military would, would uh, sign up for. I did something similar to this when I joined the Navy. I will not fire upon those in the army of God but will direct my fire upon the enemy and enemy al alone. I will protect my brothers and sisters in God's army from any assault that the enemy may launch. I will bear truth, faith in the legion to the same on and off the battlefield. All right, so anybody who's been in the military uh, will know th this sounds a little familiar. This is the oath that they give you during the swearing in when you're in the military. And uh, that is uh, where I guess he's kind of plagiarizing this. And um, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is a very interesting uh, little thing he's done here. So um, let me read on here. I will obey the orders. Uh, I'm sorry, 
I skip a part. Okay. I will. This is the part that bothers me. Okay. I will obey the orders of the supreme commander of the army of God. All right. I don't like that verbiage right there, supreme commander. And I'll tell you why later. Okay. And the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to Ephesians 411, the government of God and the uniform regulations founded on God's throne of righteousness and justice. I decree it and declare it on earth as it is in heaven. So be it. Amen. So yeah, that is a, a little bit unusual. And like I said, I didn't like that that whole supreme commander thing that he put in there because there's somebody else that likes the title of supreme commander. He is God. He's not some supreme commander. He's Jesus Christ. He's not your supreme commander. You know who talks about the supreme commander? Let me show you this clip. That. And it's not uh, Siegfried and Roy kind of magic. You know, it's a, it's a different kind of a penetrating magic. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my end. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. So, yes, Bob Dylan made a deal with the chief commander. And Mark Taylor uses supreme commander. Either way, <clears throat> that's somebody you don't want to make a deal with, okay? And um, for Mark Taylor to put out that, that kind of rhetoric is, you know, really in poor taste and very unbiblical. And uh, that's why I am out here all the time. I'm going to keep calling him out on his rhetoric because he is absolutely ridiculous with this stuff. And I'm just scratching the surface with him. There is so much, so much more to this Mark Taylor character than meets the eye. Um, he is more of a, a suit sayer than, a, uh, than anything else. He's not <clears throat> a preacher. He's not a, a minister. He just goes out here and spouts all this rhetoric. Now, what he's doing differently now is that he is not going to get caught in uh, election anymore. None of them are. He's uh, <clears throat> he's not going to make any prophecies about who's going to win the next election. I don't see a one of them. If there is any of these phony baloney prophets that called Trump for the last election and are calling him now, please send me the video to that because I, I really just can't believe that anyone would be that silly to actually guarantee victory for Trump after he, uh, after what just happened on the last election, they're not going to take that chance. They look foolish and they've been backpedaling for the last four years, you know, saying silly things like he was going to be reinstated and, <clears throat> he the election was was rigged and all that and uh you know listen regardless of what you believe that wasn't the and i've said this before that was not the prophecy that mark taylor did he went on camera i believe it was sid roth or one of them and is trump going to be elected in 2020 it's guaranteed absolutely and now and <laughs> Now they just backpedal. So uh, the funny thing is, though, I don't hear any of them saying, I guarantee it, period. That, that is his fa famous thing to say usually when he's getting really worked up and angry. He goes, that's how God thinks, period. <laughs> he was always doing He still does it when he gets himself in, into worked up into a frenzy like that. So, yeah, um, if you can find a, uh, a clip of Mark Taylor guaranteeing the, the 2024 election now, please have no problem. Send it to me at gschumacher429 at gmail.com, and I will, will use it on this program. So next up, I want to talk about this creature right here, Billie Eilish, okay? I have recently uh, found out that my daughter, Alexis, has been listening to her music, which is not making me a very happy dad. 
um, because she is very demonic. The lyrics of her songs are very demonic. Uh, I would make sure that none of her music was played at my daughter's Sweet 16 party because I just wasn't going to have it. And, uh, you know, she's always talking about going to hell. She's always talking about the demonic forces. Her songs that she writes are very demonic. They talk about hurting her. She, how she hurts herself and things like that. And these young girls today, they're very impressionable. They worship these people. And I don't want my daughter worshiping anybody other than Jesus Christ, that is. So I have this clip I want to show you from uh, Matthew 7.15 uh, put out a little while ago. And it basically sums this girl up 100%. In her song, All the Good Girls Go to Hell, Eilish is singing about global warming. And her message is basically that if we don't treat global warming with the seriousness it deserves, even good girls will go to hell because global warming will destroy the earth. That's it. Global warming is going to destroy the earth and all the good girls are going to go to hell. That's that's the uh, moral to that story. This is what her sick, twisted mind comes up with. But of course, equating hell with global warming is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Man is not the enemy of nature, he's the steward of nature, and God gave him this planet to use up. The Earth is not a fragile ecosystem, billions of years old and held together by random chance. It is a strong, robust system held together by God, who upholds all things by his power. It was never intended to be left pristine, it was intended to be used. For people like Eilish, the threat of global warming is the new apocalypse and hell, rather than the depth of human sin and rebellion against God. They see humans as being a stain in nature, rather than as people called to have dominion over nature. Do not fall for this. Young people, I know you're hearing it everywhere you go. Do not fall for this. Nature belongs to us, not the other way around. And when Eilish appeared on an episode of the popular YouTube series Hot Ones, she said this. My album comes out March 29th. When we all fall asleep, where do we go? I go to hell. When I die, so does he. Eilish jokes about going to hell and about the host going to hell. Hell. Very uh, wild thing to be joking about, don't you think? Now look at that face. You know, I read a bumper sticker many years ago, and it said, it said this, and it still holds true to this day. I wish life's problems hit me when I was a teenager and knew everything, because she's your typical teen, early 20s, nut job that thinks she's got the entire world figured out because people keep dumping barrels of money on her and telling her how great she is no matter what insanity pours out of that thing under her nose. Of course, the implicit assumption is that hell is a joke and neither of them will end up going to hell. Okay, so I'm not done with this creature quite yet. All right, so I want to play some of the lyrics well i can't play this song because i'll get copyright uh strike for that but what i can do is show you the lyrics of this song and how demonic they could be i'm actually irritated by it so much i only can get through half of it before i had to stop it so um hold on one second here so here it starts out right off the beginning my Lucifer is lonely. All right. That's the first verse of this song. Okay. Now, I'm not going to sit here and sing Billie Eilish to you, but I'm going to read it to you. Standing there, killing time. Can't commit to anything but crime. Peter's on vacation, an open invitation. Peter's on vacation. Animals, evidence. Uh, pure... Pearly gates look more like a picket fence. Once you get inside them, got your friends but can't invite them. Hills burn in California, my turn to ignore ya. Don't say I didn't warn ya. All the good girls go to hell. Nice lyrics, huh? I like it better. Because even God herself has enemies. 
And once the waters start to rise, and heaven's out of sight, she'll want the devil on her team, meaning God in the female sense. All right, so that that is about as far as I could get before I was just <laughs> just too upset to go any further. So if your daughters or your children are listening to this demonic creature, please stop them. Sit them down and talk to them like I did with my daughter because this is not a nice person at all. You thought that, uh, you know, and it's no different than... I mean, it's gotten worse. I mean, we, we, in my generation, we had, uh, you know, the Rolling Stones and Ozzy Osbourne and all the, the, you know, heavy metal nonsense, which I didn't listen to, but it was around, and I knew people that did. And uh, it's you need to stop what you're doing, pay attention to what your kids are listening to, because this type of thing will bring them down a very dark path. And I don't want to see that for anyone. This this media of music has been for a very long time um, controlling the minds of our youth and dragging them down. Um, she is 22 years old. I just Googled her. She's 22 years old. She's been famous since her, I believe, her late teens. Um, and she has just wrapped her tentacles around this generation's young people and it nearly needs to be addressed we have to stop ignoring things like this because this is not god's music so this, i just want to switch back over here real quick quickly to play you just some of the end of this song too i skipped out all the middle ridiculousness and uh so i mean right there just makes my skin crawl just those words my lucifer is lonely um but here so she goes on with all this nonsense. There's nothing left to say now. My God is going to owe me. Now, who exactly is her God? It, it isn't my God. Um, my God doesn't owe me anything. Okay. My God saved me from hell. And this girl, this creature, she needs to repent. But I don't know. She seems to have gone down too dark a path. There's nothing left to say now. Ha ha, I cannot do the snowflake thing. Okay. So let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. I can't take her anymore. Can't take her anymore. So, yes, the, the, we're very aware, Billy, uh, your God is. And like I said before, these people believe in God. Demons in hell believe in God. All right. They hate God, but they believe in him. The people who are the most ignorant in the world are the people that don't think there's a God, but Billie Eilish, she knows there's a God and she's against him. She's working for uh, Lucifer. That's her boss. She is doing a fine job out there doing what many of these other rock stars have done over the years. Trash the name of Jesus Christ, trash our father, Trash the Holy Spirit, trash anything they can get their hands on, uh, and just basically trash Christianity and the people as a whole. Laugh at us like we're we're foolish and stupid, but we're not. There's going to be weeping and mashing of teeth for you one day, my dear. And I pray, I pray to God that someday you are delivered from this. All right, because you got some kind of demon running around inside of you, and you really need to repent, get away from this. It, it just amazes me how Hollywood and the and fame and fortune just completely corrupt people. I'll bet you dollars to donuts before she start, she got famous, she's probably a nice person. You know, I don't know if she was a Christian. I really don't much about her, but it seems like that town out there in Southern California. As soon as you go out there, it just completely envelops you and corrupts you and crushes your soul. Because you have that, what they call the 27 Club, which she is on her way to joining. She's only 22. 
And that was, uh, I'm trying to think of some of them. Janis Joplin was one of them. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, uh, that group of people at a 27. I mean, I guess Elvis Presley was an old timer at 42. Um, but uh, yeah, a but lot, yeah, of, them a lot died. of them died from drug overdoses and, and things like that. And uh, that uh, that just makes, then it become you know, bigger than they were when they were alive. Elvis was absolutely at the tail spin of his career. Um, he had, he had become a, a, a joke of his own self. I mean, he was, he was way past squeezing into a sequin jumpsuit at that point in his life, but still he dragged himself out there all fat and incoherent and babble on uh, his songs to, to the masses just to make a buck out there at the end of his life. He was a sad clown at the end of his life. And all these people will be too one day. And the worst part about it is they're going to spend an eternity, an eternity in a place for corrupting the minds of youth. And I will do everything in my power to try to point that out. This is just one of her songs. They get worse, steadily worse from what I understand. Um, I haven't I haven't delved too much into it, but uh, this one here I found and I needed to, uh, I wanted to talk to you folks about it because any of us with children should be very, very concerned about this type of thing because we are living in the end times. And I know my audience is a little bit older, so it'll be a lot of times it'd be your grandchildren that could be listening to this. Sit them down, ask them, what type of music do you like to listen to? Probably, they'll probably say, ah, yeah, grandma, grandpa, dad, ma, nothing that you'd be interested in. Oh, I'm very interested. Please enlighten me. <laughs> I'm into today's music. Please let me know. And then you'll hear it. You'll hear the, the, them start rattling off their favorite artist. Then do some investigating. Do some investigating and see what these artists, you want to call them artists, these satanic artists, what kind of lyrics they're pumping out here for our, our kids to listen to because it ain't it ain't somewhere over the rainbow i'll tell you that okay it, it ain't uh country road take me home <laughs> it is uh all good girls go to hell that's what they're listening to you know i mean even my day um acdc highway to hell you know that the, these musical artists love to put the word hell and worship satan and and man They've made a bundle off of it over the years. They sure have at that. And um, it's about time that people like us started pointing it out. you know. But then again, we're going to be looked at as squares. And you, know, you don't understand you know, the, this generation. I've heard that all already. Yeah. What they, kids today don't realize is that even this wrinkled up, balding, 58-year-old man was once a teenager, I told my daughter. Believe it or not. <laughs> I was. I was a pimply-faced, skinny, big-eared teenager who was awkward around girls, and uh, I uh, I listened to all kinds of stuff I shouldn't have listened to. Um, but my uh, my parents talked to me about it, and that does help. And they and if they're if you've raised them right, they will listen. All right, or they may not. But you you know what? You have to take that chance. You really do. All right, folks. So that is going to wrap it up for another Heretic Hump Day for me. I hope you got something out of this tonight. And uh, God bless you all. So let's end in a prayer tonight. So Heavenly Father, obviously, Lord, I'm coming to you tonight with a prayer for our youth out there. They're under attack each and every day by people like your Billy Eilish's and your, even my day, your Ozzy Osbournes and things like that, trying to corrupt their mind and make evil seem good and good seem evil. And Lord, I pray tonight that you open these kids' eyes and let them see your holiness and let them invite the Holy Spirit to come dwell inside of them. Because with that, Lord, they can do so much better than what this generation has been showing so far. So with that, Lord, I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for me tonight. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out here, and God bless you all.
Well, that's going to do it for me, folks. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you didn't subscribe in the beginning, please subscribe now. And thank you so very much. I would also like to ask if you would please pray for these people who are caught up in this delusion of following these false teachers and false prophets, that they someday will wake up and come out away from this, these wolves in sheep's clothing. Also, let's pray for the false prophets and false teachers as well. Pray that they would stop deceiving the body of Christ. That they will shut down these blasphemous ministries and repent before it's too late. I would also like to ask if you're interested in supporting this ministry, if you can, please do so. You can go right down into the description box and I have a few different ways you can do that. Or if you'd like to write to me, you can write to me at Gary Schumacher, P.O. Box 181, Hal, New Jersey, 07731. And I thank you so very much. God bless you and have a good night.